2024. If you watch right now, Kelby, it's Kobe year, baby. And wow, to bring in the new year, it's another special, special, special guest because when we film this, David So is still stupid and sick. Uh. So we got Danny Riel back for another <laughs> episode. What's good? Hi. Um, first of all, I want to say if you watched last week's episode, actually is what Canadians say that we don't say out here. Instead of like, for real? Or are you serious? That's, a lot of Canadians will be like, actually? That's what you went in with. <laughs> I needed to, I just, I'm big on, um, I need closure. Yeah. And a resolution on situations. Uh-huh. And I, for everybody that watched last week and was like, what the fuck is Tim talking about? I needed just, I needed y'all, I needed to tie this. For there. clarification, we were talking about like what, what Canadians how Canadians say things and versus uh, Americans. And a lot of y'all Canadians will say, actually? Instead of, Actually. like, for real? Actually. Happy it's New Year. so true. Happy fucking New Year, Tim. Um, Happy New Year, David. You sick-ass you, motherfucker. You sick-ass <laughs> little lechon pig of a boy. Yeah. Um, I, well, I know, Danny Rail, you're a champagne girl. Um, I know you're an Ace of Spades girl usually, but I uh, could get that. So I got you some, uh, you know, some little moet. And uh, let's get it. Oh, like that some? looks really room temperature. I love that. Oh, it's so warm. <laughs> it's it's like the look. I know you love warm champagne. So <gasps> wait, but like, why are you saying that? Like that as, as if it's a fact. Because it's what you do. You like? No, warm it's shit. not. Why would you say that? <laughs> but let me tell you something. What? Let me tell you something right now. Tell me what's good. Um, my alcohol. Yeah. Alcohol. When I take shots, I make sure it's neat and room temperature. Okay. And I give it to everybody around because I love seeing everyone's face. Really? Yeah. Because not everybody can handle it like we handle it, Danny. No, of course not. But like when it's when it's not cold and someone takes a shot, they're like, what was that? I'm just like. <laughs> yeah. Look, uh, we're pretty seasoned drinkers. Nothing to brag about because I, I was sober <laughs> for 155 days, which is a big accomplishment. Let's talk about that. Let's, oh, talk, let's talk about, about that. that. First of all, let's have, a, good morning. Let's have some champagne <laughs> okay. and toast to your sobriety. Oh, absolutely. Right. Oh, my God. That was loud and great. <laughs> oh, no don't you leave lip in that bottle. <laughs> <You're> stupid. <laughs> all right. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's the new year. A lot of people have resolutions, things they want to do with their new year. Um, why, Danny Rail, you being probably one of the most drinkingest, drinking ass girls I've ever met in my whole life, why did you decide to go sober for 155 days? That's fucking 155. Uh, half a year. Divided by three, th- 30. It's like five, yeah, half a year, five, five months. Years. Five months. <laughs> five months. Why? That did sounds you crazy. Go sober. Uh, the longest I've gone purposely sober was three months. So three months, that's like three, six, 90, 90 days, days yeah. which is still good. Why did you? I want to know why you. I'll tell you, you mine somewhere. first. Yeah. Fucking Rick oh. and fucking Chia were both like. You can do it. You're an alcoholic. I, was uh, like, I hate that shit. I know. I, like, I hate that. It's like, you're like, shut the fuck Dude, up. Dude, I was like, and I was like, Rick, <laughs> first of all. Rick doesn't drink at all. He's I never know had this. his whole this life. This is always like insane to me. So I was like, bro, I'm not an alcoholic. I just like, and their thing was always like, but whenever you're at events, you have to have a drink. I'm like, cause it's free. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm gonna get a drink. I, I enjoy drinking. Yeah. Um, I'm not an alcoholic. And I'm like, I'll tell, and I'll watch this. I'm not gonna drink for three months. I'm just, just to do it. Watch this. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And my dumb ass though, I fucked up. Cause it was like, when I when I said let's do it three months, it was going into summer, so it was a oh, summer. You're so it was so dumb. dumb. It was a summer, <laughs> and put, so I'm getting invited to all these events yeah. and like parties and shit where it's like open bar, and I'm like, right, I'm not gonna drink, right? Open bar. And specifically, one time <laughs> I remember I was at some like little rooftop club, and there was a dude who plays ball overseas, and what's he, his name? Wow. Well, Okay. And uh, he saw me at the bar. He was like, bro, I used to watch your videos, blah, blah, blah. He was when like, I was 10. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm 30. He was, I was like, yeah, he's like, you old ass. He's looking down, you old ass. He was like, you know, he was like seven feet tall. He was like, let me buy you a shot. Let me buy you a drink. I was like, I'm doing a thing. <laughs> he's like, 
what? I'm like, I'm doing a thing. I can't drink right now. He's like, oh, come on, bro. Don't do that. You got to drink with me. I'm I like, can't hear you. And I'm like, I can't. I can't. He's fucking eight <laughs> feet tall. The music player. I was like, I'm trying not to drink for three months. <laughs> and he's like, come on, man. Like, I can't. And then like. You know, I'd be at, like, business meetings with dudes that are like, all right, well, let's have a drink and we can talk about it. I'm like, ah. Mm. That's important, though. Like, the business meeting things is a thing. It's, it's a thing. so social. It's a social thing. It's I a know. social. It's a, it's a social. That's all I was saying. Oh, no, I'm, I'm David Soul today. <laughs> <laughs> so there was that. Also, we never even talked about this in the last episode. I love your braces. Oh, thank I you I so love much. a grown-ass woman with braces. <laughs> I think it's so cute. All right? Uh, when Gwen Stefani got braces as a grown was that, woman. Was that, like, for, like, just for the look? That was No, that was for, like, I don't know. I think she just wanted I think bra- she just went trying to get some thoughts. Cheers. Oh, Happy, Happy New, New Year. Year. <laughs> But yeah, you know, I'd be at meetings with guys who are like, all right, man, let's have a drink and talk. I'm like, ah, I can't. So I did three months, not a drop of alcohol, and then just to prove a point. Yeah. So why did you go half a year, no um, drink? Oh, mine's going to get dark real quick. Let's get it. Let's get it. <laughs> well, no, I, um, I was in a relationship for six years mm-hmm. and engaged. That didn't work out. Mm-hmm. And after that, I kind of went into a dark place because it didn't end well and mm-hmm. all that shit. Like compiled. bad terms, all that? Um, well, of course, bad terms, yeah. Like, it was just, like, a wild, wild thing. Okay. Um, and then I was numbing myself, uh, drinking heavily, mm. doing drugs, like, just being so— I Like, I, I, there's a chunk of my life there for a couple months I don't remember, and that's mm. a scary thing. And, like, people normally come to me, like, knowing, like, I'm a happy person, which mm-hmm. I am. You and, are. It's not, I, it's not fake. You're, yeah. you're a genuinely happy person, yeah. Yeah, and, like, just to, like, have that— deep depression of like going down that spiral and you know just really being fucked up for a while Mm. I I realized I'm like no one is gonna come and save me Mm. I have to save myself like what am I doing this is crazy so I took it upon myself um for New Year's to go sober Mm. um for a month I was like I'm gonna do it for a month yeah I did for a month and after that month it was really hard it was it was super hard to do you know like I couldn't go out Cause you know you don't want to tempt yourself. No, absolutely not. Yeah. Um, did nothing social. I couldn't like hang out. Like so when I when I drink too, like also drinking became a lifestyle, mm-hmm. right? And even like doing my makeup, getting ready, like <laughs> I need a drink, like yeah, yeah. whatever. And like well, pregame, uh, pregame, <laughs> pregame was pregame of life, right? Like for every scenario that I did, and <laughs> it was the just, pregame before I take a shit. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, pre-game. Shot. I'm, I'm about to blink. Like let's let's take a shot for that. <laughs> you know, right, did right, anything, right. and so. And so it became just so um, repetitive of, like, that lifestyle. And I, I breaking that cycle was really fucking hard. Mm. Working whenever I would be at shows, drink before the shows. Mm. Um, if I have my, my, my car events or even after parties, just everything is alcohol. My yeah. whole life was alcohol. You started feeling like you were, like, depending on it a little bit? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And I'm just like, I'm like, well, like, everyone sucks. So, like, I need to, like fix my scenario and blur it a little bit yeah. so that I'd have to, I can deal with people. I mean, that's facts. Though. It is facts. Uh, like, everyone does suck. But that's not the answer. <laughs> and so I um, decided to go sober, and it was it was hard. So after the month, I was like, hey, like, even if I start drinking again, like, I still don't have control of my life. Mm. I'm I'm really dependent on this. Like, I'm uncomfortable. And I could relapse and just like I'm, I'm I kind of realized like I'm sort of an alcoholic, mm. you know, at that point because um, of of all the toxic um, surroundings that came with um, drinking. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, hey, I need to do another month. So I did another month. Then I was like, hey, like now I had to like now I started like doing like checkpoints of like I need to go to a club sober. Mm. I need to be a, to show that you could really to really be do it. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah to be there mm. and go to. Um, like barbecues, mm-hmm. go to uh, friends gatherings. Where people are like, hey, Danny, have a drink. Yeah. Take a shot, yeah. girl. Sitting one-on-one with somebody at a dinner. Yeah. All the things to like check it off to be like, okay, I did that, I did that, I did that, I did that, and it was okay. Then it started becoming okay. Yeah. And then it started becoming like, I, I started learning what boundaries are because I never had boundaries before. Right. You know, so I'm like, okay, this is nice to have boundaries and it's like yeah. a new thing because I'm very like a, Whatever you want, like I'll do it. Like mm. you know, I'm I'm very. Oh, so you were learning to say no. Yeah. Wow. I'm okay. a very like yes person. It's like I could be, 
dead at home, like by myself, and like my mom would come home, and be like I'm, I'm hungry. What do you want? You know, mm. just, just you find that energy inside of you. Mm. So that was kind of like the same kind of vibes that I was feeling with alcohol. So once I, I, I surpassed that. I was like, okay, now it's time to make some more goals. And I was like, after I think 100 days was, um, I was gonna have a big party with mm. my friends. My friends were really excited, like, Danny's back, yeah. But I, <laughs> but, but I also like thought it was super important to be present, sober, and still be cool. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Cause that's like where you don't wanna be lame as fuck when you're like, I'm you don't, sober. Yeah, like, I'm you don't drink. wanna have to drink to be fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so like I started implementing like water shots and be like, oh, I'm so fucked <laughs> up. Like just like get in the groove because everyone knows I'm crazy, right? right so, right. so I still would like I I, t I learned to like hold on to that energy and still go out and like learn to be social, like you know, mm -hmm. sober and uh, without having to be drunk. Yeah, so that hundred days um, happened and like we we I um, organized like a whole brunch and everything and everyone was really excited and then the ne the day before I was like, you know, what? I don't like this pressure. I don't like that I'm trying to celebrate with alcohol of me not drinking alcohol mm. and y'all being so happy that I'm drinking with you. And mm. I was like, so I canceled it. Mm. And I was like, I'm going to do it on my terms. Okay. If it's if it's either if I'm like sitting somewhere or having a drink, if I, if I feel like I want to drink it, I'm going to drink it. Mm. I don't want a specific date. I don't want to have that pressure because I feel like that's just, you know, giving into like sort of the whole. It's almost you don't want to feel like you're. Like celebrating getting to drink mm, again. Yeah, yeah, I got that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So so then I was like, you know what? I canceled it. Everyone was disappointed, but I was like, you have to understand. And if you guys can't understand, like your friends, if they don't understand, it's time to maybe change your surroundings, yeah. you know? Um, but fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you, I was um I was shocked yeah. when you like I think we were supposed to hang out in LA a couple times and film some stuff. And like just the universe wasn't having it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, I had got like I had made randomly like Netflix had this like restaurant pop up and I didn't know who I was going with. But I was like, oh, I'm going to make reservations. I don't know who I'm going with. And then Danny happened to be in town. I was like, yo, you and fucking Ferrari. And um, was Vubus with y'all on that Vubus trip? Vubus wasn't with us. It's Vubus' birthday. A while ago. A but, couple weeks ago. Yeah, happy, but, birthday, happy birthday, Vubus. Happy birthday, Vubus. Um, <laughs> And so, yeah, Danny was out here with Ferrari and some other homies. And I was like, yo, come come to this Netflix dinner with me. And I was literally supposed to, like, I, and I thought we were going to, you know, chill and shit. And then I got fucking COVID. Um, you dirty my, boy. My, my second round. That's my second round. Oh, my you know God. Uh, was it bad? No, I barely felt it oh. um, that second time. Thanks for not giving me COVID. <laughs> I, well, I wasn't trying to give anybody COVID, you know. So yeah. I was like, I can't make it. But y'all go to the dinner. I didn't know you were sober, though. I was shocked. Wait, I that time were you or were you? I wasn't sober then actually mm. Mm. so sorry to change your whole thing, no but, well but look I'll, I'll say this just to bring it back to my point is that I was shocked that you decided to go sober yes of because course. that's just not <laughs> I never thought you were alcoholic but I know you just you like to drink you mm -hmm, know so mm -hmm. um that shit was crazy to me and um and then you so you did the how long was it again 155 days. So I kept on going. And so I, I broke it. The only reason why I broke it. Okay. I didn't even want to, but it was my birthday. Mm. Okay. And it was my birthday. Went to Miami for the first time. Ever? Ever. Did you have the best time? I, I had a really great time. I love Miami. <laughs> it's because you Grammy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. I wasn't doing no Grammy wait, wait, shit. But how, how much money do you spend there? Like, why do you love Miami? Because it's expensive. <laughs> Miami's expensive as fuck, but it's like. Depending on what you want to do. But like, yeah, uh, why mean, wouldn't you? You know, it's, Miami's just clubs and food and drinks mm -hmm. and Kiki beautiful on the, beaches. on the river? Kiki on the water? Kiki. What's that? It's like that club that's like right on the water. It's like fucking. I haven't been in a long time. No. Yeah. Did you go to the beach in Miami? No. <laughs> oh, yeah, I did. I did. I did. I was going to say. I did. I did. The water yeah. in Miami. Have you been to the beach in LA? Like in the actual yeah, water? Yeah, it's not like the mess. So I'll tell you this. <laughs> you know, LA people, we grow up out here. We're right next to the beach, right? Yeah. And that's just cold. Yeah, it is cold, <laughs> but it's nice. Cold. It's nice. And it, and it can be nice. But when I went to Miami for the first time, it was my first time experiencing warm waves. Like someone's just like peeing. Yes. Yeah. I don't know if it's the like the Atlantic Ocean, the sun hits it different, but the shit was warm and I've never felt that before. So that was that was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so <laughs> that's a, another reason why I fuck with Miami. You yeah, know? and Miami's just fun. It's like it's it's, it's a, it almost feels like you're in another country because everybody's speaking Spanish. You know, when you're walking up and down fucking um, South Beach, like when you're walking up South Beach. I didn't really do much. I I I got a, like a whole mansion thing mm. and like my girlfriends and we all it was it was it was a very very over the top birthday that's why i was like obviously i want to drink i had like we ordered like one of those magnums magnum, oh the giant bottles right? of magnum, what? Magnums? magnums 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 of what um i can't remember to be honest wow but there's a, there's a video of me holding it. It's like, it's this big, so I have it over my shoulders, and I'm pouring it like this, and I'm getting mad at everybody. I'm like, put the cup there! Like, put the cup there! Like, you guys are stupid. I'm trying to pour it. Yeah. But it's so heavy, so I'm just like... And but, then you guys were uh, doing lots of cocaine, of course. Uh, no, 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 no. Oh, but somebody did come to present us, like, all these drugs. Okay. And it was... It was wild. Like, he just hit me up the other day, too, and I'm just like, I'm sorry. Like, why are you still messaging me? <laughs> so it was just kind of like... Um, he is like a a drug designer person, and yeah, it was okay. like crazy because he's like, "Oh, this is like pink cocaine, and this is like oh, like a sommelier, like, yeah, like yeah, like literally." Yeah. I was like, "This is so Ooh, interesting." A small yay, a small yay, because yay is yeah. like slang for cocaine. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Whoa, this is insert David and keep on doing your <laughs> fucking <laughs> slam poetry right we're not, now. We're not gonna do it. We're not gonna do it. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So you were pouring your magnum bottle of whatever fucking bottle. Yeah. You're in a mansion in Miami celebrating yeah. your sobriety. Mm-hmm. Um, did y'all go to any like strip clubs or male strip clubs? Yeah, we or? went to the strip club and I just spent two hours getting a massage at the strip club. What? Yeah, girl. From who? One of the strippers. So I was just like. <laughs> was it good? Amazing. That's why I was like, we're, I'm like, who's paying for this? Because we're doing another hour. And Time so- out. What? Let me understand what's happening. Okay. Right. You went to the strip club. Yes. You were getting a lap dance from a stripper, and she decided. Well, first, to- yeah, and then and then she does, and she does, you know, her we, lap we, dance I, thing. I, 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 let me tell right, you. We're gonna, take, we're gonna take a break, and we're gonna figure this shit out. Ho ho ho! Hey, what's up, y'all? Happy holidays, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, all of that. You already know this episode is brought to you by GoodyBrand.com. Make sure you pop in. Check out all the fly new stuff we got, all the dope old stuff we got on sale. We got T-shirts and sweaters and beanies and hats and all types of funky, groovy, super neato, coolio threads that you kids need to check out. GoodyBrand.com. Check it out. I got no code for you. Sorry about it, but that's a lot of stuff on sale, so... Go buy something, stupid. All right, love you. Goodybrand.com. So you say, hey, hey, you're hot. I'm going to get a lab dance. Yeah. You'll go to... I always get lap dances for free, by the way. Of course. I mean, I feel like strippers, when they see women and also attractive women, they're like, Finally, I don't have to grind on a creepy dude anymore. Mm, yeah, right? Yeah. So you Thanks go to- for making me not feel special there. <laughs> Thanks for taking that away from well, me. Well, <laughs> Danny Riel, look, Miami is a very, it's a lot of attractive people. Yeah, so I'm sure they see mad attractive people. So I feel like for you to get some free shit, you're next level attractive. Okay. Uh, so you're in, the le- you're in the private area? No, I'm just on the open. You're on the open, yeah. and a stripper is giving you a massage. Yes. Now take it from there, please. Um, that's literally what it was. Like, all my bottles come. Everyone's like, yeah, Danny. And I'm just like, mm-mm. uh uh-uh. I, I, don't, I don't want to party right now. This girl is massaging me. And I was like, I need another hour. And, she, like, my, I was wearing, like, this, like, um, fishnet, Ooh. bright. Were your nipples out? Mm, no. Okay. Ish. Ish. Yeah. Um, and then, and then, yeah, so she's just, like, massaging me. And I was like. So the whole night, like that's you laying that, down? No, I'm sitting there. She's like just going. Oh, rubbing all on you, over, rubbing on your titties too? A little bit, yeah. <laughs> and it, it was just, it was such a, a great massage. That sounds great. Yeah, and I was like, you guys party, leave me alone. Wow. And literally, everyone's like, Danny, let's go. And I'm like, and I was like getting bitchy because you know I get drunk sometimes, I get a little bit bitchy. <laughs> yes, I've been there. Yeah. Yeah, and so I was just like, I was like, 
don't fucking talk to me. <laughs> I'm getting massaged. This is my birthday. Like, yeah. leave me alone. This is what I want. So I, I sat there at the strip club and got massaged for like two, two and a half hours. Did you get her Instagram? I didn't think to do that. Why? Well, I'm not trying to go back to Miami. I'm not trying to hit it either. Wow. <laughs> you might. What, you, what if you wanted another massage back in Miami? I mean, I could find somebody. <sighs> That's true. Mm. Man, look, pretty girl privilege, man. Y'all could just. It's pretty girl privilege is a thing, and I I didn't realize that until recently. What you talk, it's a, uh, of course it's a thing. Why didn't you realize it? Well, I don't know. I didn't realize until everybody brings it up to my attention. Like my friends, like tell me about it. I'm like, but that's just like me being nice to people. No, but I mean, like the fact that, look, you could you could go. I want to say any restaurant right now. And get a bunch of free drinks. <laughs> like I've just recently, like especially this time being in C- California by myself. Mm-hmm. Um, oh. I need to catch up. Yeah. Are you saying I need to finish it? For those of you listening, Danny Riel is um, finishing her champagne well, uh, because I just finished my champagne. Our warm champagne. <sighs> um, yeah, so what was I saying? Any pretty girl oh, yeah. um, can go to any bar or lounge and just drink the night away for free if she sits there looking... Nice enough. Okay, yeah, true, true, and not true at the same time. So <laughs> that's another thing. So when you guys go to Vegas, or like when you girls go to Vegas, when girls go to Vegas, there's like this weird unspoken thing about a boot. A boot. Um, you can go drink for free if you go to people's tables and shit like that, right? Like <laughs> it's like this weird, like cult almost. Mm. And I hate that shit because mm. I'm very like I would rather go buy my own bottle. Than be someone's like bottle rat at someone's table. But you're different. I know it's different. I've gotten a lot of fights about that. You're too. a boss. A lot of these girls are happy to be the fucking bottle rat at the table drinking other dudes' bottles. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm just going to stop talking about that. <laughs> you got money. Right. Okay. Never mind. <laughs> but like, even if I, but like, I don't, I don't. But at the same time, like, I would be like, <laughs> Any, anything I could do just to, like, you know, not be a little bum around. You know what I'm saying? It's not really good luck. I mean, you you are, um, you know, uh, you got money. Um, a lot of girls, I feel, I feel like 100%, especially nowadays, in a time where, you know, it's like, hey, if that's what you do, that's what you do. That's the, the vibe. Mm-hmm. A lot of girls are completely cool with just going to the club and just drinking everybody else's alcohol up, you know? That's just such an awkward thing. And look, like, and, and, and as a man who feels like I, I'm i always the one buying bottles, right? Yeah. Even in my, in my group of men. Yeah, yeah. I feel like, yeah, put my card down. We'll figure it out. Because also Tim's right. got money, just saying. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. subtle flex. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. But yeah, I feel yeah. like it's a, you get to a point where it's almost, when I, when I was in the clubs like that, it's been so long, but... When you're in the clubs like that consistently. Back in my day. But back in my day, we <laughs> buy bottles with these bitches. Man. And like, you get your bottles. And of course, you and your three homies, you're not going to drink all this alcohol by yourself. So you kind of, and someone's like, yeah, well, let's get some girls in here. And you're like, oh, yeah, okay, cool. And you then you kind of get accustomed to a bunch of random women just drinking up your alcohol. Because, you know, you're not going to Okay, so as shit. a man, like, when you, okay, just like... So when you have your bottles, mm-hmm. like, and you order your bottles, and, like, some girl comes up and, like, starts... What, what do you keep looking at your phone? Oh, because I'm I'm checking on the food. Oh, sorry. Okay, I'm just curious, cause like. Hold on, this the the Postmates man is is. Oh, he's, he's having issues. Oh, he's he's here. What? Um, all good. Just leave it. It at the desk. Tell him to come up here. <laughs> yes, thank you. Oh wow, the food's here. Want me to run down? Um, sure, Robin. Thank Thanks, you. Robin. Here, we'll take a little break.
Yeah, you were saying, like, how do you, like, you were asking me how it feels. Uh, oh, to have someone be drinking your bottles. It's just kind of something you are, you get used to, you know? Um, but would that make them attractive? I think that makes them so unattractive. I think it depends on your mindset, right? Fair. If I'm, like, on my single shit, I'm buying bottles, and we and the goal is, yo, we in Vegas, we're trying to hook up, then you kind of know that there are girls looking to find tables where they can drink. Yeah. And then if you so happen to strike up a conversation with somebody where you're like, oh, okay, she's not weird. <laughs> then <and laughs> She's not weird. She's not a stage five clinger. Well, I'm not going to lie. When you're in that single stage of, of your life, and you're just trying to hook up, it doesn't even matter if she's weird. If you have an attractive woman at your table mm -hmm. drinking your alcohol, it's kind of just like, what are you doing? Or do you want to come back? That's crazy. <laughs> I, like, I, like, so for me, like I've like I've never had a one night stand. Mm -hmm. And like, like, have you? Obviously you have. Yeah, of course. <laughs> like, why would I even ask that question? Um, like for me, I'm like, I'm I'm such like a like I, I, what is that? A demisexual? Oh, you need to be attracted to the brain. Yeah. Yes. Like the feeling and just, um, I'm very emotional that way, um, and I've always been like that, I guess. Yeah. So I've always wanted to have a one night stand. But I'm just like, I just, I don't think I have it in me to do it. And also, like, you ain't worthy. <laughs> that well, um, I love that. I love that for you, uh, <laughs> to be like. I'm not about to let no randoms into this sweet poon of mine. Yeah. Um, <laughs> where, you know, on the flip side, as a man, like, living my single life at one point, mm -hmm. it was kind of like, who want it? Who let want me it? get into any of these who, little who want it? You holes. can get it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So As dirty as fuck, Tim. Specifically, <laughs> it was. It was. It was a dirty time of my life. If we talk about Vegas specifically, yeah, yeah. it was kind of like... You know, and it kind of lined up with a time in my life where I was kind of known. I was openly single. Everybody knew it. So it was like, um, yeah, if somebody. And social media wasn't so crazy at that, that time that you wasn't so outed. And I wasn't so worried. You're lucky. Yes, I wasn't worried about so getting lucky. quote unquote exposed, yeah. you know. But also, like, look, I, I feel like in my, even in my dealings of that time in my life, um, I never, I made sure to not let like make anybody feel disrespected. Yeah. Anybody I was hooking up with, they knew what the situation was. I never like lied. Mm -hmm. I never like was like, yeah, you know, like, uh, I love you to like hook up. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It's like everybody that hooked up with me knew what it was. So I don't yeah. think anybody felt um hurt by me, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Um, but like even like as as specific as like Vegas, yeah, there were times. Oh, I don't think I've ever told you this story. Once I'm in Vegas, let me get this. Okay, let me tell you a story there first. Yes, so we're, we're, we're talking about um, Dre's last time. We were talking about Dre's? Dre's in L.A. or Vegas? Vegas. Okay. Um, and, uh... <sighs> <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> no, it's my girlfriend. Uh, <laughs> just, like, literally everything I do. Um, so, this was the first time I've ever experienced somebody trying to fuck, like, trying to get me somewhere to fuck. Okay. So... I got hired at Dre's in Vegas for my birthday. Well, this is, and you were already Danny Riel. Yeah. But you're doing an event. Yeah, Dre. for okay. Danny Riel's birthday. Okay. Who's that? <laughs> and uh, thank you. You're welcome. And um, so at the end of the night, like for the first time, it was like, okay, this guy hired me, went to the nines, got my, my, my rooms and my tables and like whatever, everything was great. Then he comes to me and he's like, so you ready to come to my room? And I was like, I was confused because this is not like part yeah. of my my nature. You're like, for what? And I was like, huh? And he was like, are we are we gonna go upstairs or what? And oh, I this is the guy that hired you? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Uh-huh. And I was like, so confused because we're sitting there on, th on like on this like like, you know, when you get the 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 benches of the VIPs and you're sitting on top. Okay. And then I was like, just confused, and I was like, what, no, yeah. I don't understand. And then he was like, oh, fuck, are you serious? And I was like, huh? Interesting. And then he was like, and then he looked at me and he was like, ugh. And then he went, and then, and then watched him grab this other girl and grabbed her hand and fucking went up. And really? I was like, what just happened? Like, you, I... you hired me just to 
fuck me? Wow. Yeah. So this person uh, emails your booking email. Well, obviously it was like I think it was for, for with a Ferrari, but ah, so uh, when, I can't remember at the time, but right. it was. Did some someone hired you? Yeah, paid your fee, mm-hmm. flew you out mm-hmm. to as work, normal as normal as it does to work this event. Didn't even like it wasn't even like flirtatious vibes yeah. either. And then so at the end of the night when it came, it was like like scrambling, and I was, was like, like we're well, I was like, this we're is having sex, thing? right? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> and I was like. Blown, like my mind was blown. Wow. Yeah. So that was like really weird. But I've never really had any of those encounters ever since. But like, that was like, huh. That's so interesting. Yeah, uh, yeah. That's crazy. I didn't know it worked like that in Vegas. <laughs> well, I, I'm not to say that it, that's how it works. Oh, but... 100%. Though. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Whatever. So I ordered yeah. from, uh, so I told Danny earlier, I was like, yo, scroll, scroll through our options here on Postmates and see something that looks good. Um, she chose seaweed hand roll bar. <gasps> As y'all know from a previous episode, I love seaweed hand roll bar. I feel like this might be one of the most popping sushi spots in LA. Um, and I picked it. And you picked it. I know um, good pictures when I, I see I it. I picked a few hand rolls and then I'll, here's just like, I know, you, scallops. I know you don't fuck with the uni. Like, I do now. You, do, you like uni now? <laughs> Baby girl. I Since do. when? Who did that? Um... I don't know, but yeah, I know, I know you. You know, I don't like. That's why I'm, I'm happy that you ordered uni because I fuck with uni now. <laughs> I've always been an uni boy, and yeah. then, but like, you know, he Dan, knows that I don't. You know, as as sophisticated as your palate is, yeah. I think one day you were like, I don't fuck with uni. I was like, oh, oh and then she just became ugly. <laughs> I was gonna eat both of them if you, she just became no, ugly. No. I don't fuck with her anymore. Uh, but yeah, so I got some uni. Too. Oh, she's not gonna fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I pop. I flew you out to Vegas. What the fuck? Uh, <laughs> no, I I eat uni now. Wow, look at you. I know. Look at the growth. Yeah, I I, do, I yeah. Look at me now. Well, um. Okay, what's yeah, going on there? Like, don't be is, eating without. This me. is just shrimp. Cheers. Uh, I'm just I'm just hungry. I'm hungry hey, let's, too. Let's take a little. Let's take a little uh, something of food. What is this? This is just uh, some here. type of shrimp situation. Okay. Um, and then I'll tell you my uh Vegas story, which I'm sure I've told okay. before. Cheers. Cheers. Mm-hmm. Okay. What is this? I don't know. Where are you going next? What do you want to do? You want to do a little thing? Or you well, if you're doing that, or? I'm doing that too. Mm-hmm. I'm following your lead. Mm-hmm. 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 Here, you eat something. I'm going to tell you a story. So, don't tell me what to do. <laughs> One time when I was in Vegas, I was with my friend Erica David. We just had our second baby. Shout we just out. talked about her in the car. I know. I just spat on this damn thing. Do it, do it. Me and David, this this whole thing is a mess. Shout out to Erica David. Um, one time I was out there in Vegas. She lives in Vegas, or she lived in Vegas. I don't know. Anyways, can, hold on, can I eat like whatever I want? Go ahead, go crazy. So we were at a club, mm-hmm. and of course, yes, uh, you know, I had a, a fan base at this point, <laughs> and there was a girl. And I was literally, you know, as a man, when you're at the club and you're hooking and you're trying to hook up, you're you got your your what? <laughs> you have your fucking wolf eyes on and you're trying to see what where your options are, okay? Mm-hmm. So one time in Vegas, I um oh yeah, get some, get some, get some, whatever. Uh you want some soy sauce? Too? Nope. Just the ginger? Is that yeah. what you want for? Okay. Ginger wasabi. So um and I was lit- we were literally about to leave the club. And this girl was like, hey, oh my God. Hey, you're Timothy Delgado. Hey, what's up? I was like, what's up? What's fuck? Well, pretty much. <laughs> and I was like, okay, what's up? We're hanging out. And I was like, well, should we go back to your room? She was like, yeah, cool. <laughs> that was the conversation, that's, you fucking dirty ass motherfucker. I mean, look, it's man, when you- Man, these guys out here just be so crazy. Well, you have to realize also for us to be that way, there's girls that are, are down. All right, so we're all crazy. You dirty ass hoes. We're all crazy. <laughs> we all hoeing out here, okay? okay so, fine. and that's the vibe in Vegas, right? So, I was like, okay, um, should we go back to your room? She was like, yes, cool. Go back to her room. Um, we start engaging in relations, okay? <laughs> and while we're like, I'm literally in the middle of this shit, the people that were staying in the same room with her open the door, come into the fucking room. Oh, you guys are fucking? Yes, while we're fucking. Yeah. Oh my god, cool. I jump behind the bed. I'm hiding behind the bed. My fucking, I'm naked, right? I'm hiding okay. behind the bed. I'm naked. And they're just kind of like, oh shit, hey, Timothy, what's up? <laughs> 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 like, what's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? Yo, what's, what's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? Well, they, yeah, they knew who I was, right? They're like, oh, hey, okay, we're just going to grab something, head out. They leave. We, we finish 
the sex. Mm. What? Did you come and she came? I I came. I don't know if she came. Who the fuck cares? When you're in when you're in the <laughs> Let me tell you this also, Danny Brielle. When you're when you're a dude and you're just hooking up, mm-hmm. you don't really care. You only care about getting your own nut. I'm innocent. I don't know what he's talking about. Exactly. <laughs> you only want your own nut situation yeah. situa- situated, okay? No. Anyways, talking to her afterwards, she tells me, so this is my... Um, Boyfriend. Bach- this yeah. is my bachelorette <gasps> Vegas party. I'm engaged. And I was like, oh. Does that mean you get a whole pass because it's your bachelorette? I don't know what it means for whoever it You're is. Like- but I'm like, <laughs> she was like, hey, I'm engaged. This is like my last little hurrah. And I was like, oh. And I'm like, well, do you want like my number? She's like, no, we're good. I was like, oh, shit. And I was like, wow, I feel were so. Were you bought her? No, I wasn't. I was like, wow, I've never felt used before, but this is cool. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm not mad. But I was like, oh, shit, that was it. And um, and then, you know, mm-hmm. I never, never spoke to her again. And I was that. Mm. And you know, I, I hope I hope she's still married and living her best life. You know, <laughs> but that was that. <laughs> so there you go. Yeah, good job. Don't eat the uni. I won't. I won't eat it without you. Don't trip. Yeah, that's for us. How's everything else? Everything's been phenomenal. There's seaweed hand roll bar yeah. in Glendale, guys. So there is one place in Dallas, uh-huh. Hasayuki. 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 Mm-hmm. It's a Hasayuki. Mm-hmm. Um, the best fucking shit ever. Yeah? Yeah. And the price point is so good. It's like this, like, little U-bar. They change the menu every day. Mm. It's, it's, it's a wild, wild place. I don't, I, it's, I can't wait for you to go there because when I open up my coffee shop in Dallas airport. Should we open up a, a sushi spot together in Dallas? No. <laughs> <laughs> Why? You don't want to do business with me? I want to do business with you, but I don't want to do it with a sushi spot. Why? Because mm, we can do better. Okay. I have better hopes for us. Okay. What do you want to do? Mm. One. Um, so I am opening up a coffee shop in in uh, Dallas, Fort Worth mm-hmm. Airport. Mm-hmm. DFW Airport. Thank you very much. Wow. Look at her. Business mm-hmm. owner, Danny Riel, y'all. Shout out to Ferrari. Um, <laughs> Enough. <laughs> Tell us, tell us about this coffee shop you're opening up. Um, okay, so it's a coffee shop. Mm-hmm. It's, what do you want? What, what did you got over there? Well, what do you, like, I'm not done eating it. There's like a, there's some Alaskan okay. Oh no, crab. you can eat this one. There's I wanted a, to eat these there's ones. There's a scallop, there's Alaskan king crab, yeah, well, yeah. and then there's some toro. I know, and I wanted to eat it, I just didn't have time. Yeah, 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 do it, do it. I'll talk about, um, mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. shout out to Michael Ferrari. He's a very lo- lovely young man. He has very cool tattoos. Uh, business owner, club promoter. Um, we have matching tattoos. You and Ferrari? <laughs> you ain't got no tattoos. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, this. That little dot. That's yeah. why you got the dot. I made him get it. You messed a dot tattoo with Ferrari. I made him get it. Yeah. That's uh, hilarious. Oh no, it's, it's like my bestie. Is that a real it's story? My, it's a real story. It's so buttery. Here, oh. hold on. Put that in your mouth. The crap. Yeah. Hell yeah. That was, that, that was like saturated in butter for like seven years. This place is great, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it is really yeah. good, but it's not better than Hasayuki. Okay. Mm. Right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's so buttery. It's like mm. salty butter. That's like straight butter. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, it almost tastes like you're eating butter, but like butter. Mm. Um, um, what is what is that called when they um, extract it and it's very potent? <sighs> I can't think of the word right now. But anyways, it's very it's very buttery All right. and salty. Mm-hmm. So yeah, no, I made him get um, matching tattoos with me because he's like my life partner. <laughs> we have been um, he's been so Michael Ferrari Lee. We're talking about him now. He's been my manager for over twelve years. He came and, out here just to get a tattoo. Not, yeah, well, yeah, he did. <laughs> he did um, from Crybaby Hunter, who is mm-hmm. a really good tattoo artist, mm-hmm. and. And then I was like, I want to get tattooed. And I was like, let's just get matching dots. And I was like, how cute is that? Like, I would like to get, like, matching dots with, like, all my best friends and, like, have it, like, different colors all the way up. <laughs> how cute is that? That's pretty damn cute. I know. So where should our dots Actually? go? Actually? 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 Where should our dots go? You and me. Uh. <laughs> Forehead. 
<laughs> oh wait, how was that one? Uh, great. Total. Yeah. So, um, um, tell me, coffee shop. Tell me. Yeah, the coffee shop is crazy. So there's already um two ampersand. It's called ampersand uh, coffee shop. If you guys are in the Fort Worth area or Texas, you probably know because it's uh it's a big deal. Mm-hmm. They've also hired me and you. Have you been hired? Um, me and me and Ferrari have been discussing ampersand things. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Low, low key, low key conversations. Low key conversations, but now I'm gonna be involved in them. Wow. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I'm down. I need to invest some money because like I know because you're just sitting on so much money. I'm just I'm sitting on a little bit of money. Not I know. so I wouldn't say so much money, but I'm sitting on money that needs. I to... I feel the same way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. First world problems. You know yeah. What I mean? You know we get old. <clears throat> we know? work so hard, so it's nice that we actually have something. Um, behind us right now. A, li- a little something is, is nice. Yeah, so um, opening up the coffee shop has been taking a little bit longer than expected, um, but it's such, like, an liberating thing because, like, after i gone through my divorce, I'm just going to call it divorce now, <laughs> my divorce, mm. <laughs> I, you know, didn't feel like I was, I had, like, a purpose and things like that. So getting into business is such a, a liberating thing and Love it makes you feel like a boss ass motherfucker you and are a boss man i know yeah but like just like you know but like not to lit- have the literal assets boss. behind you yeah to have the assets behind you and and like the team is the most important thing because like going into business with somebody of course like you would know this firsthand it's like it's so important yes. to have the same morals the same values the same and goals and just like everybody being on mm. the same page. It's hard to find a yeah. good team for sure. It's so hard. It's so hard. So I, I luckily came in mm. like, you know, it wasn't just me. I'm like, it's my coffee shop. But <laughs> I like to say that. So it's, it's fine. Are you a coffee drinker? I am now. <laughs> <laughs> Only ever send coffee. That's right, bitch. I, <laughs> didn't, uh, I didn't start drinking coffee until this past year. Why did you start? Because the fucking babies, Danny. <laughs> I'm so tired. Does I'm, it actually help you stay awake? Yes. Oh. Because uh, I, I, I used to never drink coffee. Like, Oh, my God. Because people, oh, do you Sorry. like the Toro? <laughs> the Toro with the truffle? Mm. Popping, yeah? Oh, my God. Yeah. So, no. uh, my whole life, I never drank coffee. Oh, look, give us some more reactions. <gasps> seaweed Handle Bar. Mm. Shout out to Seaweed Handle Bar in Glendale. Motherfuckers. Oh, my God. Oh, I love y'all. <laughs> so Pop good. Me. That was so good. Um, oh, my God. I used to never drink coffee. My mom drank coffee every day. I never drank coffee. I he was like, fuck like, these kids. Well, I, just, yeah, I just feel like I don't I mean, fuck this kid. Fuck, fuck this boy right yeah. here. And I just I never I never needed a boost because I always kind of had like a natural energy. Yeah. As as we are the same person, basically. Yeah. We got energy. Right. Mm-hmm. But uh, I never felt tired until this like past these past couple years, you know, and like mm-hmm. I was I was OK. With Veda, I was like, okay, I'll have a little coffee here and there. I'm okay. But then once we had two, I was like, I need something because I'm I'm so tired. So now, Danny, I'm like, you know, I started like ordering little fucking Starbucks. Oh, oat milk. Uh, fuck. Yeah. What's it. your what's your girly ass order? Let me, no, let me tell you, it started off girly as fuck. Yeah, it was because you know. <laughs> then, I, then he started getting gangster. Well, like, yeah, I, I want you. that black coffee, that americano with fucking extra shot of espresso. Literally, and a, a splash of y'all dog. Yes, yeah, actually, <laughs> literally, bro. Actually, it was like fucking oh the oat milk <laughs> fucking shaking tea, whatever the fuck. Actually, shaking motherfucking sugary know, shit, bro. right? Yeah, but now. Oy. I like I I get I go hey let me get two shots of espresso <laughs> over ice damn. two pumps of sweetener that's it oh you usually got sugar free no damn just you want a, that insulin spike a little bit of uh, sweetener bro, just a little actually, brada, just actually, a little actually, actually the brada, parkade, just a by little by the pylons <laughs> and they actually but bro. I feel the pile <laughs> I turn the pylon upside down brada <laughs> and I fill it with a little bit of espresso uh, two shots of espresso is called a dopio is what I learned. Because I, or, I order it so much that they would be like, oh, okay, you want a dopio. A dopio. Dopio, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah you know what I'm saying? So mm. I just get a little bit of espresso <coughs> over ice, a little bit of sweetener, and that's my shit, you know? No milk, no fucking creamer, none of that shit, you know? Oh, yeah. You're done, no. Yeah, you're done, no. <laughs> <laughs> you want to you try it? You, you, the uni, you going to do the uni? I'm ready to do uni with you. Let's, Let's do it. it. Let's fucking do it. <laughs> Wait, do you want any of this shit? This shit here? No, I'm okay. Oh, so you bitch? I don't like ginger. Yeah, like, what's... <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, so take that then. Take that, take that. 
Okay. Okay, use your hands, Tim. Fine. Okay, there you go. Okay. Wow, you, you know, that's crazy. I know. It's so crazy. <laughs> it's so da crazy. Cheers. Cheers. Fun. It was like wet tongues. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm. Wow. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We're an uni girl. That's crazy. Mm. <laughs> mm. Mm-hmm. Mm. Isn't that great? Oh my god. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, baby. Mm-hmm. Cheers. Oh. <laughs> That's so good. <laughs> Sorry you guys have to just hear me <laughs> moaning. They love it. They love it. Oh. Hmm. Why didn't you like it before? Uh, I had texture. I had a really shitty piece of uni the first time I had it. Oh. What's, what are you doing down there? Grabbing a napkin. Oh, um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I think I had a really shitty piece of uni and it just made me want to barf. It was a little too seafoody. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a little too seafoody. Seafoody. Yeah. <laughs> um, and yeah, it just wasn't it for me. I got gotcha. you. Um, yeah, so that was that. But back to um. My sobriety. Yeah, please. Uh, Tell us me, about it. Pour me some more. Okay, look, uh, let's talk about it because uh, are you in tequila or champagne? Both. In the same cup? No, oh, stupid. I was about to say, you wildin', bro. Um, <laughs> this is a good episode because this is this is the first day of the new year, yeah. Danny Rio. Yeah. Um, and I like that we're talking about your sobriety and you kind of like... <laughs> As we're drinking, he's popping up a bottle of um, tequila. Well, you know, it's you know, like it. you had your divorce mm-hmm. and you kind of came into your own, figured out like, hey, you don't need alcohol to live your best life. It's just fun. It's fun. And I think it's lit. I love that for you. Um, and also, what are you looking at for 2024? What are your, like, you know, as cliche as it is, what are your resolutions? You know, because I feel like Every year, we all, everybody has their resolutions, um, things they want to work on yeah. for the new year. Absolutely. Um, I didn't think about it too far on because I just found out like today was Christmas. Um, <laughs> 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 but uh, going back to like <clears throat> the sobriety thing, what came along with that was um, trying to like just do shit that I never did. So this year, I, as crazy as it sounds and as uneducated as it sounds, like I, I haven't read a book, like a not like you know like. What do you mean? Like. You haven't read a a, a book your whole life. Well, not my whole life, but my adult life. You know okay. what I mean? Like after That's school fair. and like. Just, I literally haven't read a book since high school. You haven't. No. But you're writing a <laughs> a, a movie. Yeah. <laughs> but so uh, that's yeah. something you know. Yeah. Go on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'll hold 26 pages, right? <laughs> I'm, like, almost at 30 right now. Oh, yeah. I watched your last episode because I had to catch up. I was like, oh, I'm, he's like, you're in two episodes. I'm like, oh, fuck. I'm working on it. <laughs> I better watch on one it. of these episodes so I know what to do. <laughs> um, But, like, so I, I started reading books, which is, like, a crazy thing because, like, you don't really... When you, like, go s- decide that you're just going to sit down and read a book, you know? It's like, mm, there's something damaged. I feel like it's... <laughs> <laughs> there's something damaged. It's such a commitment. But, like, now that being older, um, like, in your 30s and stuff, there's, there's the conversations of, like, everybody talking about their traumas, mm. their, their, like, healing and everything. So it's, like, one first half of your life is, like, experiencing. The last half is, like, dealing with the fucked up shit that happened the first time. Oh, you mean, like, in the books? No, I just, like, in life. And that's why you mm. want to try and figure things out and read books and knowledge yourself and whatever. So I got you. Yeah, so read what. What's happening over there? I'm just trying to figure out this is. <laughs> they make it so that the wow the seaweed stays crisp. Oh, that's so cool. Um, but I I don't I didn't do it right. I forgot what I was saying. <laughs> Sorry, I, I wasn't trying to ruin your moment. <laughs> I want one. Yeah, take a bite. That's so cool. This is the lobster roll. Okay, I oh. This is the mm. what? Oh, that whole thing is done. Oh, mm, yeah. Okay. Um, oh. Okay. Oh wow. Okay, here you take the bite. You take the bite. No, I can't do that. <laughs> Go. <laughs> Thanks. Mm-hmm. Mm. Is it worth it? Worth it? Mm. 
Mm. But no. Mm-hmm. You eat some plastic or what? Oh, you did. Mm. I got all over the mic. It's okay. What is it in my mouth? Okay. Mm-hmm. Tim, you didn't. Sorry. No, it was I'm not okay. sure how it works. It's low key complicated. Yeah, really complicated. I'm so sorry. I was going to chime in and say I remember them taking off more plastic than that. Yeah, but the I first wasn't time. confident in my memory. <laughs> Thanks, Robin. <laughs> I'm just going to. So sorry. Uh, just start <laughs> that was, so you can blame me. That was. Me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to blame you. Robin. But what is all this? Like, where does it even come from? You eat it. Kill it. How am I supposed to eat that? Okay, I'll eat it. All right. So what were you saying? I forget now. Um, you were saying that the second half of your life is dealing with the shitty things that happened to you in the first half. Yeah. Oh, wow. Basically, I think what I was literally trying to say was talking about um, marathons, Robin. <laughs> um, so, anyways, just going back to that. Yes. In the beginning, when I did, like, my 155 days of sobriety, <laughs> that was me, um, I also took up running because when you're running, it's such a – like a mindset that like Robin I want you to chime in on this this is where I want you to come in here <laughs> okay I got you <laughs> it's like trying to like so like when you run what do you like what made what, what made you start running Robin I I think I started uh, I started running originally because it was one of those things where I wasn't sure if I could do it because growing up in sports and you know PE in high school it felt incredibly hard but I had my dad was a runner my sister was a runner so I was like I just want to see if I can maybe get to a 5k distance which is 3.1 miles and then from what time did you have a time set I didn't have a time set I've always been I'm just more interested in the distance now I'm getting a little more into time but now it's more like the runner's high feels really good and it's just a really satisfying exciting thing to do when you're just like I ran eight miles today like damn you run eight miles not today but when when I when I have run like really long distances the rest of the day I just feel like really good about myself and really accomplished okay yeah absolutely and that's that's such a thing do you do you have like people that you run with I tend to run alone I like the solitude she's a lone wolf that's that's a really good thing so I just we started um an ampersand running club as well okay so it's like a a different entity of like just us starting to run. So like Michael Ferrari Lee and I. Shout out to Ferrari. Yep. Again. <laughs> That's his real name, by the way. It is. He's he didn't do it himself. <laughs> I thought it, he did, and I was like lame ass. We all we all do. We all do. <laughs> but, That's his motherfucking birth name, Michael Ferrari Lee. Yep. Yeah, and uh, so we also decided to start running, and decided to do half a marathon, which was insane. Like running. It's such a thing. And and so once we started doing our running, like, goals, we started to, like, gather people to come run to. So we made this whole community. So we started making the Emerson Running Club. Mm-hmm. And now, like, literally we have, like, 40 people come out running three times a week. That's dope. So dope. The community is amazing. And that's, like, what really, um, like, has inspired me to, like, do better, be better, Find a better purpose. Mm-hmm. Um, and especially when it's like something healthy, like to have mm-hmm. a healthy hobby, because mm-hmm. that's kind of hard, you know? What I, I mean? have none of those. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you have your family is a healthy hobby. I'll be boxing a little bit, but that's. You like, box? I, 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 yeah, that's my, a lie. And my trainer. It's a damn lie. I have a trainer and <laughs> he, he like, we box a little bit. Oh, I'm kind of nice. I just get, oh. <laughs> a little bit. How nice? I'll show you a video. Okay. I'm all right. I sent I sent Rick a video and I was like, "What did Rick say?" He was like, "You look like you know what you're doing." Oh, and I was like, "Wow, Kai Rick, <laughs> I miss Rick. Rick is Tequila? like hilarious. I guess so." Pour champagne. Mm. <laughs> uh, I'm glad you found a healthy habit that's like dope. Yeah, it just to create a community is great, and um, um, I, I don't know if any of y'all have uh, done a marathon or. Even thought about it. Uh, to start with, I guess, Robin, obviously, like, 5K would be a good good starting point. Yeah. There are also a lot of really great apps that give you 
really easy progressions. There's one actually I used years ago when I did train for my first 5K. It's literally called Couch to 5K. <laughs> so it helps you essentially get from your couch, no activity, to being able to run three miles, which is Ugh. very cool. So, because I think a lot of people burn out when they're like, oh, I can only run for 30 seconds. And it's just like, well, you got to build your way up. Okay, do you, so do you also um, think of nice glasses? So cute. Change up. Do you also um, like take into account like zone two training? I've actually just started to dive into that. Uh, it's <laughs> been a struggle because I think there's something wrong with my heart. But oh, <laughs> oh, oh. It's just all, it's just really high because I think I have a lot of anxiety. So I just, when I run, it's just high. That's fair. <laughs> but zone two it. training is like such a thing. And like for me, I'm one of those people who are like all or nothing. Like, so um, to train for running and long distance, especially, you have to do zone two. So for zone two, for what that means is like your heart rate has different zones. There's zone one, mm -hmm. which is like resting zone, mm -hmm. zone two, zone three, zone four, whatever, so on and so forth. I think it stops at zone five, though. But um, so zone two is like walking, um, and you burn a lot of fat walking. Mm -hmm. And this is something that like I had to train my mind because I'm such like a hit person, where it's like mm. I need to like you feel sweat like and feel go that crazy. Intensity. Like I need yeah, to yeah. like oh, so many push ups. <laughs> um, otherwise, nothing's happening. But like by doing zone two training, that is like very essential to help you longevity and train your heart and your. I, I don't know, like the way that you your are able to. Your body just functions. It's supposedly yeah. supposed to make your heart Strong, more stronger. economical in a way. Oh. Is what I heard. It just, um, it builds its optimal cardio endurance mm -hmm. in zone two. Endurance, yeah. Basically so endurance. the more you train in that zone, eventually, like let's say you are walking and that's the only way your heart rate stays in zone two. Eventually, as you pick up your pace and you do other training outside of it, like speed work and things like that, eventually you'll realize, oh, I actually, my, you know, 13 minute walking mile in zone two is now an 11 minute jog. And slowly yep. over mm. time, your mile time will shave off as your heart rate stays roughly in that same zone. And then that allows you to run further and faster. Yeah, oh, yeah, well, absolutely. I have high cholesterol, so <laughs> I need to so, I need to start running so or something. And just like, so like y'all know the statistics, I did my one, Half marathon in under two hours. Okay, uh, okay. Barely training. Okay, Danny Riel. But um, you Dang. know it. It ain't cheers. no tang. Cheers to you. Twenty twenty four. Let's get it. It's a brand new year. Absolutely. Let's get got whatever you guys are going after. Whatever you want to do. Go do a half marathon. Do all that shit. Yeah. Look, I know this is cliche as fuck, but no, it's not. literally like. Life is short, man. Life every, is so short. Every, not only every new year, but every new day that you wake up is a new opportunity to go after what you want to do and pursue what you want to do and, and live your best life. Mm -hmm. So I pray that all y'all like wake up and you can you you have the energy and um, positivity to go after what you want to do because look, man, life is beautiful. Life is short. And um, I'm just happy that I'm here and I'm happy that you guys are tuning in and I appreciate you and I love you. Thank you, Danny. I love you. Thanks, and Timothy. Thank you for coming and filling in for stupid David. Thanks, David, because you suck. You did ass. great. You did so good. Bye. Cheers to you. Bye. Thank, thank you all for watching. Make sure you to, uh, like, comment, share, subscribe, follow all Danny on everything. Yeah. Cheers to you. Happy New Happy Year. Fucking Cheers New to Year. A, a, a glorious 2024. Good Cheers, night. Guys. <laughs> Yo, it's the dudes. Behind the food, d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d